Hi everybody, Chef Dave here from Dave Specialty Foods. We're actually at my house today, so I'm not wearing a chef coat. It's summertime. We're gonna get kind of casual, but really cook some awesome food. Hope everybody's, um, you know, at home doing fun stuff, staying healthy and strong. Um, do what you can to move around and go out and, you know, like my daughter said the other day, it kind of sucks that everything fun that you think of doing, you have to go, oh shucks, I probably can't do that. But that's not that many things compared to the things you can do. We went biking, you can go to ice cream. They've got these like side window things you can pick up at your local uh, homemade ice cream store like Caponari's. Um, so we've been doing that and um, trying not to make this COVID time uh, uh, too bogus. So welcome to uh, my backyard. Uh, we're gonna walk around a little bit later on. We're gonna pick some fresh herbs and uh, we're gonna grill. I have a gas grill today, which I, I really like charcoal. That's really the best of the best. But whenever I'm talking to about 100 people and I ask how many people have a gas grill, um, or I'm sorry, a charcoal grill, very few people raise their hand. That being said, I'm a chef and this has been my entire life and I do have a gas grill because I don't have time for a charcoal grill yet. So I'm 54, as soon as I retire, I'm getting a charcoal grill. I'll have a little more time to get those things warm and have a lemonade and wait for the charcoals to get ready. We're gonna do a little grilled, um, uh, uh, kind of a sirloin tip steak. I got a story about that in one second. We're gonna do um, a charred salsa. I'm, gonna call, I'm not gonna call it tomato salsa, but it's a charred salsa. And it's, it's a kind of a twist on just um, kind of really getting our veggies kind of charred and blackened and really almost burned and then it's going to be a complete mess chopping them up but but it's really really worth it and it gives you a little story to tell when you have to explain how why your fingernails are full of onions and then we're going to do grilled pineapple so uh, kind of basic fun stuff but um sometimes i say basic loosely because it's a piece of pineapple that we're going to eat at the end of the day with some strawberry sauce but it's um really good and if you haven't done this you got to do it and i'm telling you guys i haven't had any charred salsa with uh, sirloin tip steak perfectly grilled um, with fresh herbs on it finished with uh, grilled pineapple in a restaurant ever i've worked in a lot of them and i've eaten out in a lot of them you have to have this simple yummy stuff so one thing that i think we're, we can benefit from covid is um eat better at your house than you can think of than you're going to a restaurant don't sit down and go oh we could be at a restaurant fix it don't be afraid to really really cook better quality food. So uh, welcome to the, the Backyard Grilling. We're going, I think you're gonna have fun with this. Please make stuff like this. And if you do, email us at davespeciallyfoods at yahoo.com. That's great. And while you're at it, and while I'm on topic, <clears throat> When you guys are going out and you're choosing to go out somewhere, and I understand if you gotta get Band-Aids or something, you gotta go to a big box store. But if you're getting food, or if you're getting um, something that can definitely give you a choice of where to get it, skip the fast food giant chain stuff. And even the, the medium range giant chain stuff, go to somewhere that probably cares about you, that's keeping the money in town here. A lot of times you go to these big chains, you give them the money, they shoot it out to Oklahoma somewhere, nobody sees it, the money doesn't go around. Um, keep it in town. And um, I know it's a big meme and it's a big kind of cliche stuff that you see, especially now with COVID, but do it. I'm a small guy, come to my shop. If you haven't been to my shop, you're missing out on the greatest sandwiches ever. I'm serious, so you gotta do it. Let's start with we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get on our charred salsa. So, so I have this grill. This happens to be a saber grill, okay? And I got this at a local grill shop. I didn't go to some Home Depot place, okay? So I got this from a local grill shop. So this is a, a saber grill. I've never seen one of these in anybody's houses. We do catering. This grill's reading more than 800 degrees, okay? Now this is called a kind of an infrared grill. It's not real complicated. It's just a basic grill. But what happens here, and you're going to see this. When I put something on the on this grill, it's not going to shoot flames out. So that's the detail that I really didn't know about when I got a grill. I went to pick out a different grill at this place, and um, uh, they uh, it's called it's actually called Hearth and Home on 14. So there's a plug there. I went to pick out a different grill, and they actually told me, Dave, we're gonna you, we're gonna sell you the same grill that we have at our own house, and it's called a, a saber. It's an infrared grill, which means you can get this really really hot. I'm gonna put this this awesome uh, steak on here. It's not going to shoot up flames out of the grill. So when you when you guys have that happen at home, and that was on my other grill that I had, it's a problem. It's not a good thing to have flames shooting out of a grill. And what you see is like a like a like a Weber grill, charcoal grill. You might get a little flame, oh, which I like better. I'm telling you guys, charcoal kills anytime. It's the best. If if you do see a lot of flames shooting out of your grill, 
it's not a good thing. And so when you've got a Weber, and a Weber, or a char I say Weber, but a charcoal grill will never get to 800 degrees. It's not going to happen. So we're going to get our salsa going. So I've got this preheated. This has been about heated for about 10 minutes. And it's nice and clean. So one thing that really kind of irks my nurkle is when you go to someone's house to, to cater, and they open up the grill, and, that, and they go, oh, oh we, have, we forgot to clean it. I'm like, guys, when you're done with the grill, leave it on for about... 10, 15 minutes while you eat dinner, get up, just give it a quick brush, maybe a paper towel across the top. That way when you turn it on, it's ready to go. Who wants to look at a nasty grill with last week's halibut fillets sitting on there? We're taking two tomatoes, okay? Remember, this is, we're not making anything today that requires measuring. So some salsa. If you have half an onion, go for it. If you like onions and you don't want tomatoes, you're allergic to garlic, it, there, there's no, you got big garlic, small garlic, doesn't matter. We're gonna take some garlic cloves, okay? We're gonna take about, I don't know, 10 or 12 of those. That's 15 of them. That's, you can't, you, we're gonna lose about three or four of them from just burning or, or falling through. So don't worry about it. We're just gonna char some of that. We've got our tomatoes whole. And we're gonna take a nice onion, okay? This is not anything special about this onion. It happens to be what we call a yellow onion or a Spanish onion. This doesn't have to be a walla walla sweet onion or anything like that. We're gonna just cut the top and bottom and just stab it like that. Don't mess around with trying to get to this little skin. Just get to the first layer and pull that sucker off, okay? We're gonna cut our onion probably in quarters like this, okay? Big, nasty old chunks of onions, okay? I might rethink this. Let's cut these in half. Here, rethinking. I'm gonna cut these right in half here. All right, so I want these to kind of burn up and char the skin and everything. So in we go, a little bit of olive oil, make sure it's good. Got a really hot grill, we got onions, garlic. You see these little garlics in here? Look at this. Got these little garlics in the oil. These are actually kind of big. You can see by the my finger, these are actually pretty, pretty big garlic cloves, okay? In we go. And you gotta make sure they're peeled, so don't put a whole head of garlic on a grill. Or Lots of good olive oil on here because we want these to kind of burn up and char here, and you're not gonna put any salt on these. As soon as you have vegetables, and you've, if you've ever seen me cook before, you guys, if you have vegetables, probably never will I say salt them, ever, on the grill, or if you want to boil some asparagus with some salted water, that's a little bit different story. Never put salt on, especially on grilled vegetables, sauteed, roasted vegetables, roasted um, asparagus, roasted Brussels sprouts, never salt because the water starts coming out and they'll never char. Just gonna dump them on here, look at that, okay? So, just let them fall as they may, I'm fine with however they land here. Look at the garlic. Look at the heat from here. This will be just my own charcoal grill, but you're gonna have some of that garlic falling through the grease. Let this all fall apart and get nasty. That's fine, we're gonna cover this and let that char. We're gonna save our bowl for later, okay? So, let's go to the gar uh, garden and get some fresh herbs. Here we go. All right, you guys, check this out. So, back in my garden here, I don't have a lot of, of, of uh, really, any vegetables. I don't have time for it right now. I've got, I work like 70 hours a week, so I don't have time to pick carrots and stuff like that. Love to do it, but not, not yet. I'm gonna get my charcoal grill and start growing carrots. Look at this, this is a sage plant that I've grown here for like 15 years. It's massive, it's starting to flower here. And so we're gonna pick a little bit of the sage off here. Let's grab a little bit of this, look at this, okay? So when you, when you have these fresh herbs, look at this. You wanna grab them with your hand and pull on it like that and then smell your hand. Don't waste, don't waste your time smelling the herbs, okay? Because the herbs don't have that much smell to them. But when you rub this, like you go to your friend's house, rub the herb, pull it with your, and you could feel the oils on here amazing okay see and you never need to wash your hands ever you can just rub them on the sage plant and they'll smell just fine <laughs> we've got this beautiful sage okay fresh sage it's ready to go oh, and it's all organic we're not going to spray this with anything ever you guys all right we got uh, uh cilantro look at that for our salsa we've got some rosemary and we've got some lavender see you grab this the lavender is insane smell that you guys smell it look at the, the rosemary and the basil this is just intense and the and the, and the what do you call this uh uh, uh cilantro awesome Let's go chop it up. So look at these, these, these little garlics, look at the garlic. The garlic is just charring, look at that. We wanna burn it, the onion, I'm not satisfied with that at all. We need to burn this mother. And make sure this is nice and burned and charred and all the onions are gonna start falling apart. Now, look at your tomatoes. Tomatoes is water, okay? This is all full of water. So you gotta make sure, this is gonna take forever to, to, to cook these, okay? There's our char going there, okay? Nice. Close it, let it burn, and we're awesome. This is like a salsa. Onions, tomatoes, garlic, some cilantro. But look how we're kicking it up a notch. Our cilantro, Maggie's behind the camera. She said she's eating this stuff like just out of the garden. Just It's unbelievable. I could just jam this in my mouth and be awesome, okay? So while we're waiting for our little guy there, our little uh, salsa, let's get our steak going on. This is a, a sirloin tip steak. Now, I got this from my butcher, and the problem now is, and if you guys haven't seen this yet, this is what's going on. You can't 
get steak. I mean, you can't get beef. It's amazing. It's a, I had some great uh, skirt steak the other day, and then I went back, and there's no skirt steak now. So, so if you haven't seen me at Dave's Specialty Foods, I have a, I guess it's kind of like a restaurant, but we do mostly catering. You can come in and get gourmet sandwiches and soups. So part of that is we have purveyors that you can't get at, at, a, at, a, at a grocery store or something like that. So I was going to look at ribeye. Ribeye steaks are like 12 bucks a piece. It's insane. I don't mind spending it. I love you guys. You're great. But quite frankly, I'm not going to spend like 50 bucks on five skirt steaks or whatever. So a little bit of olive oil goes on here, okay? Don't be afraid to get in here and flip your meat and touch it. Don't always use tongs. You got to get in here and work with your with your with your steak or your chicken or whatever. I'm going to put a little bit of salt on here. Now remember, salt on your veggies is not good because water's going to come out. And the biggest mistake people make with steak is Everybody marinates and does some silly stuff like that. Not a big fan of marinating really anything at all. Problem with marinades is, what do you think wine does to your meat if you set it overnight? The meat goes in this big, it comes out of a baggie or a, or a Tupperware or whatever, this big, it sucks all the water and juice out of your meat. Never marinate with wine. It's, it's got these um, sulfites in it and it's, it's not, it's, it's going to dry, and tannins, they're gonna dry out your meat every time. This is what's going on. I don't care who says to marinate it, stop marinating, your steak's gonna be better. I'm gonna take a little bit of salt. My salt's mixed with pepper. You can kinda see the pepper flakes in there. Might be dirt, I'm not sure. <laughs> So steaks and meat need the salt in the beginning. I'm gonna put salt on here and go right on the grill. We're not going to salt this and let it sit for three hours while we wait for our guests to come over because then your steak is gonna be all sitting in this puddle of juice, which should be the juice in the steak, not in the plate. Okay, so I hope everybody understands that. I'm gonna take herbs de Provence, okay? That's a nice little French herb here. It's got a little lavender in it, actually. There's your, now no fresh herbs on here. Don't put fresh herbs on here. All they do is light on fire and you, it smells good. You think you're eating it because it smells good, but it's gone. You're gonna light them on fire. Fresh herbs going later. Oh, I have some granulated garlic. You can use a little bit of this here. Nothing wrong with this. Just make sure it's uh, granulated garlic, not garlic powder. Garlic powder's got other funky stuff in it, okay? Our thing is crusted with these herbs. I wanna put a lot of herbs in there. Remember, a lot of this burns off, and I've got a lot of olive oil on here. We're gonna, we're gonna sear this, and we're gonna plop this right in the grill. Here we go. Look at that, look at that charred tomato. It's starting to fall apart, it's all charred, it's all, look at this, look at this onion skin. It's all a little char, I like that, that's fine. It's gonna add a little bit of nice, a lot of times you don't want that burn going on, I don't want all of it, but here I wanna taste a little bit of bitter char on the sweet onion, okay, pull them off. Now you don't just go in here and pull everything out, just pull what's done off, okay, look at that onion. Look at that, you guys. Kinda let these onions break apart, see this? It's not a whole slab of onion anymore. So we're just letting these onions kind of break apart. What I want you to do is look at the steak here now. A lot of people are, are, are freaked out at how you do this, okay? So you can tell there's little lines in here. You can probably see that. So the steak was like, just flip it like that. Flip it like a, so it was, it was, the steak was like this, just flip it like that. I don't know what you call that, like a 25 degree turn or something like that. Now after this, we don't want to completely cook one side. Terrible, you don't want to do that. You want to make sure you stay awake during this, okay? Here's our steak. It's got a little bit of X on there. It's a nice, super hot. And look at this, you guys. I'm telling you, it's 800 degrees. You can see the fire down there. It's not blowing up on flame. So let's cover this. What does covering do? When you cover it, it becomes an oven. Now we've turned it into an oven, so now the, the tomatoes and the onions are cooking rather than just charring. Um, so we've cleaned up now, and um, you can tell. We've got these onions, and I'm, I'm very picky. Mate, don't go, ah, these look okay. I'm in a hurry. Don't give up. You've got to get this char flavor on here. So these tomatoes, just because they're soft, they're not ready yet. You can see even on camera how soft and squishy these suckers are falling apart. Don't move them. Just let them sit there. Look at these onions. Let these suckers, they're almost done. I want a little more. Let them just char on there. This is good. How do we know what's going on with the steak? Okay. So see how kind of flabby it looks here? It's kind of bouncing. It looks about the same as when it was raw. And you can kind of, common sense, when things cook, they kind of squeeze and they get they get tight like this, right? Especially meat, it gets all pork chops and brisket, they get all tight like this. When this is starting to get done, it's gonna be a little more firm. It's not gonna be, it's gonna be a little shrunken and, and, and a little touch. Um, now at this point, we've got a little hash marks on there. We can start moving it. We can do about 50% on each side. Make sure you're, you're flipping it every once in a while. 
when it starts getting a little firmer, we're gonna start, and you see like you go to a steakhouse or you know, a place where you can see them cooking in the kitchen, and you see them doing this a lot, okay? And they're poking, or they're poking with their tongs, okay? It's kind of a, a, an old school thing, we call it grabbing the cat, okay? So you're gonna grab your, you got this little, you got this little skin here, see how soft this is here? Okay, this is raw steak, raw chicken, okay? And as you squeeze, it gets harder and harder and harder. And as you squeeze, this is well done. See, my knuckles are all white like this. Um, my, my, my fingers are red there. It's, it's, that's hard. We want to go about soft, about halfway. See how my knuckles kind of melted out here? I'm not so grabby. And I've just got this softness in my finger. That's what you're feeling for in here. And if you don't know, you go, ooh, I'm not sure what it is. You're probably close. You can decide. It's not a, it's not a, uh, uh, you don't have to be, feel like you're being unchefy. We do it all the time. Peek inside a little bit. It's underdone, put it on there. If it's overdone, put sauce on top of it. <laughs> Here we go. Here's our salsa. We're just gonna let this sit for one second. We're gonna cut our pineapple and prep it first here because this is very hot. We're gonna chop this by hand. We're gonna let this sit. Okay. I'm gonna pull this off and let it sit. We're gonna, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna let this sit. I'm pretty happy with this. And what's gonna happen now, as we pull this off the grill, this is the key and this is why I cook this first. The steak needs to go on first, not last, okay? Don't put the steaks on. Oh honey, put the steaks on and we're ready to eat. Our friends are here. We've got the wine poured. Don't do that. You want to cook the steak first. This should sit here. Don't cover it. I don't want the steak to stay hot. I want it to start cooling off. When you cook a steak, all the juice runs away from the heat. Does that make sense? So when you've got your heat on the bottom here and your steak's on the grill and the heat is heating up your steak, the juice goes to the top, which means you're flipping it over. The juice all goes to the center. And they're just sitting there waiting for you to cut it open and pop it out and pop the juice off your plate. We don't want that. We want the juice to rest, to kind of come out through the steak. I'm touching this here. I think this is a perfect medium rare. I'm gonna show you uh, after it's rested. Pineapple, you're looking for this to smell really good. You wanna get kind of a gold butt on it. And it should be not too really green. If you got one that looks so picture perfect and it's wonderful, it's not ready yet. Don't buy that, okay? And the top, you'll see is a little bit loose. So, we're gonna cut the top. There you go. There's the top of your pineapple. So, here we go. We're gonna cut the bottom. Okay, so let's cut around the outside. So we're cutting kind of like this. See, this is round, okay? So around we go. You can do this, okay? Around we go. We're gonna, we're gonna, here we go. We're gonna cut, uh, we're gonna cut nice thick slabs, okay? There's three of us at home right now. We are gonna eat three of these pineapple slabs, okay? Did you say four? Okay, fine, I'll do four. So here's your pineapple, okay? Nice big slabs of pineapple. Nothing's on the grill. We don't have to stress out. Our steak is just sitting there. Remember you guys. Don't cover your steak ever. Stop it. Okay. If you cover it, then you just keep cooking. It's like a Boy Scout oven. You keep cooking it. Now, a little touch of vanilla. Okay. Don't be cheap. Nice bunch of vanilla on there. I put some sugar. Now, sugar is the same thing as, as salt, like my story. If you put sugar on here, water's going to come out. It's kind of common sense, right? You put sugar on fruit, water starts coming out all over the place. Okay. We don't want that. We want to put the sugar and throw it on the grill. There's about probably a quarter cup of sugar. A lot of this is going to burn off. Here. Throw it all in, it's about a quarter cup of sugar. Uh, a little bit of booze, okay, that's Bacardi Gold. This is gonna cook off. If you don't like booze or you don't drink booze, that's fine, but you can always add a little flavor. We're gonna cook off the alcohol. There's gonna be no alcohol in here. This is a very important uh, note when I talk about cooking with booze, okay? Here's your pineapple. A little bit of sugar, a little bit of, of uh, rum. You can use brandy or, I don't know, port wine maybe is okay. Uh, just a little touch of booze on there, okay? Don't use vodka, there's really no flavor going on with that, okay? You wanna use some kind of dark rum, something like that. We've got this coated with all that sugar right on there, okay? Right on there. The pineapples are just like the tomatoes. They're gonna smoke like crazy because there's some sugar on there. These are gonna take forever to cook because they're just basically a big chunk of water, okay? So let these things kind of char on here, that's okay. Let these things cook, don't be afraid of it. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna close the grill. Charcoal's fine with this too. It'll smoke a little bit, but let it sit, okay? We're gonna close it. Let that sucker sit there for like five minutes, okay? It's gonna take about three to five minutes to really get a burn on there, because I don't wanna eat, I don't want you to serve me grilled pineapple and I don't see a grill mark. You're, you're gonna go, oh, it's grilled pineapple. You want something to look grilled because you're eating with your eyes way before you eat, right? This whole video is with your eyes. Way, and it's gonna look like it's delicious. Eat with your eyes way before you eat with your mouth, okay? All right, so here's your salsa, you guys. It's, now it looks, I don't know how this is gonna look on camera. It looks almost, I don't know, what can I say? It looks a little boring. Now the messy part, and this is the investment part, but it's gonna, it's gonna be a mess, but it's worth it, okay? I dump this out on a cutting board. This is a crazy mess here, but it's okay. 
save your bowl. You gotta get in here and chop, okay? So, see what we're doing, you guys? I'm just holding this basically, and I'm slicing. I'm, I'm starting and I'm slicing all the way through. Don't just try to go like this, okay? You gotta get in here and slice it. And you see, I've got these strips here, okay? So, I'm gonna go sideways here. We're turning sideways, and we're just gonna go sideways with it. We're gonna chop, look at that burned up, look at that. Look at this garlic. Man, they don't show this on TV. Okay, here, here we go. Look at this, you guys. This is not gonna suck at all. This is messy. It's a complete insane mess, but we're keeping it to our cutting board here. We're gonna wash up. Make sure you wash up before you start here. And it, it already looks like salsa, right? This looks like salsa. You go to the store and say, oh, but Dave, I can buy that charred salsa. It looks the same at the big box store. No, 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 no. Okay, not even near. I want this to be pretty even. Look at that, it's fairly even. It's a nice chunk, but look at how my salsa is not a bunch of nasty liquid water. No bueno, this is nice, kind of dry, chunky salsa. That's the same bowl. It's got a little olive oil in there, that's fine. All right, so your salsa's ready to go. Look at that chunky, and it's 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 very um, wet, but it's not mushy. It's got no flavor. I wouldn't waste my time tasting this. There's nothing going on here. There's no salt. There's no cilantro. Um, there's no pepper or anything in there. We're going to fix that in a second. Here we go. Let's look at our pineapples. Look at these. Okay, so the pineapple, I moved them a little bit, but the pineapples, look at this one, okay? That sucker's definitely grilled. We're going to go back into our liquid. These took about, I don't know, four minutes, okay? Now, look what's happening. My pineapple's got a little softness to it, okay? Okay, we're going to go back into our liquid. We're going to stir them around in here. And we're gonna put them face up like this because these are these are still pretty hard. I don't want just pineapple with a char on it. I want it's kind of soft and sexy, okay? Now uh, we'll let that sit on that other side for about a minute or two. All right, you guys, there's your pineapple. Let's let that sit. Salsa, fresh cilantro. Look at that. Okay, give that a chop. Let's put some pepper. I've got pepper in my salt mix, but we like a lot of spicy pepper in here, okay? Remember, pepper is its own little spice. A little bit of salt in here now, don't be afraid. A little bit of olive oil in here. Look at my salsa, this kind of needs a little bit of, a touch of olive oil flavor in there, nice. I've got a Cajun mix, okay? This is a, this is my little painter's tape Cajun mix here. I buy spices fresh ground for me, okay? This is from uh, Savory Spice, guys. Name is also Dave, super, super name. A little bit of Cajun spice in there. Our pineapple's almost ready. I'm gonna check it, look at that kind of this. This is, this is how it's gotta look. It's better look just really like that, okay? So here's your steak. Okay, so your steak, look at how this steak is. I, put, I took it off of this, this board, look at this. It's not full of juice, it's just got a little bit of grill stuff on there. It has been resting for about probably 15 minutes now, and that's what I want. I want it to cool off. Now, it's pretty easy, but you have to understand resting. We're gonna cut an angle, you never wanna cut straight down. Boring, okay? You don't wanna cut little diamonds here. You wanna cut at an angle like this. I haven't looked inside, so let's, let's see what we get. Look at that, it's perfection. It's perfection, okay? Look at the juice, and look at how it looks like a prime rib. It's not red in the middle. It's all even. Here's what we're gonna do. This is two portions, okay? We're gonna slice at an angle. Watch how we plate this, I'll show you. This is a ribeye steak. This goes for a, a, a New York strip. It doesn't matter the cut. I slice it. I started doing this at home because I'm from the restaurant business, and it is, look, look what we have here. Look, this is way better, and you're watching your portion. Everybody agrees, eat a little le less red meat. This is gonna help you do that, if nothing else. Let's take our pineapple up. Our pineapple is softened a little bit. Look at the backside, look at this, guys. Okay, look at the pineapple, okay? It's, the smell is amazing. Back into our bowl, like, okay? We're eating outside on the deck. We're gonna show you how we're doing this. Um, get out your fine china, okay? This is custom made for a uh, French chef in probably the early 1900s. Eat on this, don't save it for after you're dead. That doesn't help anybody. Here's your steak, look at this. Perfectly cooked, look at that. Okay, now, fresh sage. Let's take some, is our rosemary. We don't need a ton of that, because it's pretty intense, right? You guys know that. Okay, fresh rosemary, not dried. Just use a little bit, a little bit of rosemary. A little fresh herbs, look at that. Right on your steak, boom. Don't be cheap, okay, it's like a little salad. Here's your salsa, okay. Oh my God. Smell that, you guys. This is amazing. You're never gonna be able to buy this in a store. Serve this, they will all wonder, what is this stuff? You can see the garlic floating around in there. Look at the big garlic. Pile that with salsa. Beautiful, okay? Let's go and let's get our uh, other plate. Look at the pineapple, you guys. Go to the bottom here, see the juice? Go to the bottom here, get the juice. There's your pineapple, it's like a, it's like a flipping 
steak char, okay? It's like a burger. Put a lot of that juice on there, that syrup. This is lavender. Looks like rosemary, but it's fresh lavender. You're fresh lavender, you're forcing. What you're doing is you're forcing. What if they don't like it? I don't care, they're eating at your house. A little bit of strawberry sauce around here. Okay, bon appetit everybody. This is how we eat. A little white wine, but there's red in the glass, sorry. <laughs> This is how we eat on our deck. This is seriously how we eat on our deck all the time. Let's taste this. And I want to wish you all a happy grilling. Uh, this is my, my little medium rare charred salsa steak. Mm. Amazing. Visit Dave's Specialty Foods and um, bon appetit. See you later. Boom.